let us go then, you and I. When the evening is stretched out against the sky, like a patient etherized upon a table. Let us go down certain half-deserted streets, the muttering retreats of sleepless nights in one-night cheap hotels, of sawdust restaurants and oyster shells, streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent that lead you to an overwhelming question. <laughs> oh, do not ask what is it. Let us go and make our visit. In the rooms, the women come and go, talking of Michelangelo. The yellow smoke that rubs its back upon the window pane. The yellow fog that rubs its muzzle upon the window pane licked its tongue into the corner of the evening, lingered upon the pools that stand in drains, let fall upon its back the soot that falls from chimneys, slipped by the terrace, made a sudden leap, and seeing that it was soft October night curled once about the house, and fell asleep. And indeed, there will be time for the yellow smoke that slides along the street, rubbing its back upon the window pane. There will be time. There'll be time to prepare a face, to meet the faces that you meet. Time to murder and create, and time yet for all the days and works of hand that lift and drop a question on your plate. Time for you, time for me, and time yet for a hundred visions and revisions before the taking of toast and tea. In the rooms, the women come and go, talking of Michelangelo. And indeed, there will be time to wonder do I dare? And do I dare? Time to turn back and descend the stair with a uh, bald spot in the middle of my hair. They will say, oh, how his hair is getting thin. My morning coat, my collar mounting firmly to my chin, my necktie rich and modest, but asserted by a simple pin. And they will say, oh, how his arms and legs are thin. Do I dare disturb the universe? In a moment there is time for decision and revision, which a moment will reverse, for I have known them all already, known them all, the evenings, the mornings, the afternoon. I have measured out my life with coffee spoons. I know the voice is dying with a dying fall beneath the music from a farther room. So how should I presume? And I know the eyes already. Know them all. Eyes that fix you in a formulated phrase. And when I am formulated, sprawling on a pin, when I am pinned and wriggling through the wall, how then should I begin to spit out the butt ends of my days and ways? And I know the arms already. <laughs> know them all. Arms that are braceleted, white and bare. But in the lamplight, down with soft brown hair. <laughs> Is it the perfume from a dress that makes me so digress? Arms that lie along the table or wrap about a shawl. And should I then presume? And how should I begin? Shall I say I have gone at dusk through narrow streets and watched the smoke that rises from the pipe of lonely men in shirt sleeves leaning out of windows? I should have been a pair of ragged claws scuttling across the floors of silent seas. And the afternoons, the evenings sleep so peacefully, 
smoothed by long fingers. Asleep, tired, or it malingers. Here on the floor beside you and me, should I, after tea and cake and ices, have the strength to force the moment to its crisis? Though I wept and fasted, wept and prayed, though I have seen my head grown slightly bald, brought in upon a platter, I am no prophet. But here is no great matter. I have seen the moments of my greatness. Flicker. I've seen the eternal coachman hold my coat and snicker. And in short, I was afraid. It would have been worth it. After all, would it have been worthwhile? After the cups, the marmalade, the tea, among the porcelain, among some talk of you and me, would it have been worthwhile to have bitten the matter off with a smile, to have squeezed the universe into a ball and rolled it towards some overwhelming question, to say, I am Lazarus, come from the dead, come back to tell you all, I shall tell you all. If one settling the pillow by her head should say, <sighs> that is not what I meant at all. That is not it at all. And would it have been worth it? Would it have been worth while? After the sunset and the dooryards and the sprinkled streets, after the novels, after the teacups, after the skirts that trail along the floor, and this and so much more, it is impossible for me to say exactly what I mean, but as if a magic lantern through the nerves on pattern on a screen, would it have been worthwhile? If one, settling the pillow or throwing off the shawl or turning to the window, I should say. That is not what I meant at all. That is not it at all. No, I am not Prince Hamlet, nor was I meant to be. I'm an attendant lord, one that will do to swell a progress, start a scene or two. Advise the prince, no doubt an easy tool, differential, glad to be of use, politic, cautious, meticulous, full of high sentence, but a bit obtuse, and times indeed almost <laughs> ridiculous, and times indeed fool. <sighs> I grow old, I grow old. I shall wear the bottoms of my trousers roll. Shall I part my hair behind? <laughs> Do I care, eat a peach? I shall wear white flannel trousers and walk upon the beach. I have heard mermaids singing each to each. I do not think they will sing to me. But I have seen them riding seaward on the waves, combing the white hair of the waves blown back when the wind blows the water white and black. We have lingered in the chambers of the sea by sea girls wreathed in seaweed red and brown to human voices wake us and we drown.